Okay, so mesh grid is a little weird. Um, I have this in here already, but um, sometimes you have data that doesn't match in size necessarily, and we wish it did. So like, if I just run this, I have x is a one by five and y is a one by three. Um, now, let's say that I wanted to do like every combination. I want to multiply one by one, two, three, and then two by one, two, and three, and three by one, two, and three, four by one, two, and three, and five by one, two, and three or something like that. Like I want to make a little times table out of it. Um, they're not the same shape, so there's some limitations on, on what I can do. So there's this thing called mesh grid, and I'm going to show you what it does. So I'm going to call these, it's going to have two outputs. The two inputs are x and y, and then the two outputs are going to be new x and new y. And what you're going to see here is that the new value of x gives me the 1 through 5, but it gives it to me three times. And then the new y gives me 1 through 3, but it gives it to me in columns five times. So now if I do this and this, or if I look at like the, the corresponding elements, like 3 comma 3 of this one and 3 comma 3 of this one, you know, we can correlate and we can map them, and that way I can kind of get every combination of these together, if that makes sense. So um, what I can do then is it'll, um, like if I wanted to say, well, what are all these multiplied by each other? It'd be like, what's one times one, one times two, one times three, one times four, one times five, and then one times two, two times two, two times three times two, four times two, and five times two. Nonetheless, that could give us our multiplication table. So we can do an element by element. So basically what we're doing is we're reshaping x and y um, so that x will have the same column, the same rows, but multiply listed columns. The second one will have columns with multiply list or rows with multiply list. You know what I mean. The, the column is the same and then there's lots of them. And then this one, the row is the same and there's lots of them. But they do it so that the two sides ultimately will match so I can do an element by element comparison and get myself like a little times table or something like that. And it's not terribly impressive, um, but it's kind of neat in that, you know, as I change things, it'll automatically, so now this is a one by nine, so now this is nine long so that this matches perfectly kind of a thing. Do you see what I'm getting at? Um, I actually don't like having that many there. What if I did? one um, skip by threes to ten so um, one two three four five and now this is a one by four so there's four rows of that one through five and there are five columns of that one four seven ten going right there so then these are all the different ways I can multiply those and um, combine them to get you know, a, a product. So that might be something that comes up that you don't realize you need until you need it. To be honest, the most that I've ever found needing to do it has been with graphs. So for example, if I've got, um, you know, let's say for some reason I have X and Y and they're different um, points. Now this doesn't really make any sense because I could just as easily make these match. Um, and I don't have to, or I could, or whatever. Um, but the idea is that I have this x and I have this y, and I want to plot a surface function. So um, basically what I want to do is I want to plot, here if I do z equals sine of x plus cosine of y, um, even if I make them the same size, um, z is only going to be a 1 by 100. Okay, I can just make this 10 for the moment so you can kind of see. So z will just be a 1 by 10. Um, but what I really want is I want every combination of x to go with every combination of y. Because if I plot this in 3D, which we don't know how to plot yet, but that's okay. If I plot this in 3D, I'm going to get just a line that exists in the ether, you know, just like random line like this. See, it's just like a weird line um, because it's just taking the corresponding elements and it's only giving me one thing. Um, so if what I really want 
is a surface. I'm actually going to leave this here and I'm going to create a new section. Um, so, but what if I really want is to see something more like a surface. Um, I can use the same points. I'm going to go back to 100 because it makes a prettier picture. Um, and I'm going to do a mesh grid. So I'm going to say basically rebuild these so that they have the same number of elements in each of them so I can kind of do a side by side or a, all the thingies comparison you see. So you see how we've got 100 by 100 of the new X's and the new Y is also 100 by 100. Okay, so I've got that and now I can say, okay, so my new Z is going to be the same thing, the sine of the new X and the cosine of the new Y. But now whenever I plot those, it's plotting all the different combinations and hopefully will give me something if I talk real nice. Come on, girl. There we go. So there we go. So it actually comes up with a nice surface plot um, because it's showing me all the combinations of, it's kind of cool, all the combinations of the um, X's and Y's and all the Z's that can come out from those combinations. So again, mesh grid is one of those things that you're like, I don't know when we're going to use this until all of a sudden you're trying to plot something and then you're like, oh, that's, that's why we would do this is so that we can actually get a, a surface. So you see, this is a surface, whereas the thing that we were originally getting, I think was just like one of these, not even one of these lines that's in this color, but like a line that's just kind of cattywampus out in the middle of nowhere. Even if I make it smooth, it doesn't really help. Um, just kind of hard to see what's going on um, and apparently hard to uh, plot because it doesn't seem to want to do that. Um, there we go. So see this is just that plot and to make this I just clicked in here and then this popped open here but um, yeah you can see that this is just a single line that you can kind of see what it's doing um, but from the top <laughs> it's it's I can't even tell what axes these are. I guess this is the, the X and the Y. And then this is the Z. So you can kind of see what it's doing, um, but that doesn't give you nearly a good representation of what's going on um, as showing all the different combinations. So mesh grid is a fun little thing to try to play with. And um, one of those things, again, that you're not going to realize you need it until it pops up.